everybody, Josh RV Nerd, Ambitious RV here with some updated footage on the 21 MRK Ember Touring Edition. This is a floor plan I initially debuted last year uh, here on this channel, and uh, for the most part, they didn't go messing with something that wasn't broken. However, they made it bigger in the place that it was smallest without actually making the RV any larger. What I'm getting at here, they slid the slide for it a little bit and what that created was like an extra roughly six to eight inches of space in the bathroom because this thing was tight like a tiger. It was not fluffy friendly if you were an American sized dad bod kind of dude or lady. So now you actually have room to get in there and sit down and do your business and uh, you know not be uh, elbowed uh, into your ribs or anything like that. For this model, it, it comes in as one of their smallest, lightest of the touring series, but it, it has arguably one of the biggest living rooms, uh, barring their opposing super slide new models that they just came out with recently here. Uh, up front, you've got a 60 by 80 true queen bed with all the ember things where you've got the, uh, you know, storage below it. There's the huge drop frame front storage compartment going on uh, below that. They also have uh, in the slide a big like triple seat theater seat. It has two recliners and a middle drop down armrest. So you have your choice between population control and cuddle compliance, whatever works for you. The ceilings in these are almost seven foot tall, which means uh, all your overhead cabinetry is just bigger than it otherwise could have or would have been. And uh, not to mention the fact it's just got uh, an aircraft carrier size countertop space running down the door side of this. Um, you know, there are smaller, lighter versions of things like this from, say, like Imagine, from Surveyor. Uh, Rockwood has something like this now. This is definitely one of the biggest, heaviest versions of it, but it also does some things that the other ones don't, like the taller ceiling. Uh, you've also got that torsion axle suspension system. Only Rockwood also does that. But up, uh, you can get this outfitted from the factory with 400 watts of solar and a 2,000 watt inverter, which is great for travel stops. But it also allows you to leave that bed down in transit, so you don't have to ever use this as a Murphy bed if you don't want to. And as the biggest version of this floor plan I've ever seen, like it's, uh, I think overall the longest and, and I believe the heaviest, uh, it, it has to come packing some extra heat that the others don't. And overall, I think it delivers on that pretty darn nicely. First of all, they use that uh, different kind of Euro window system, except in the slide sides. Those will still have um, slide up down panels. They don't tilt open so that you don't accidentally leave them tilted open and then close the slide and end up smashing everything up. Whether you knock the slide out of alignment or just break the window, no matter what, it gonna suck. Now you don't gotta deal with that here. But everything on this is a little bit bigger. What's interesting is they slid the slide forward like six or eight inches to add extra space into the bathroom. But there's, it, it sure doesn't feel like you've lost anything in here. It still feels plenty open to me. And the lighter colors and the taller six foot 10 ceiling, 82 inch uh, ceiling height really, really come in play to kind of help with all that right there. Now they have this big three seater sofa, which is another indicator that it's a little bit bigger because they had a little bit more room for a larger slide. But if they have a longer bathroom and a longer slide on the driver's side, that means that they have to have a bigger, longer kitchen with more cabinet storage space than basically anybody else who makes this floor plan. Because you, you, you have to make both sides of the RV the same uh, length. Otherwise, things start to get a little bit tricky. Now, they're carpetless and ventless. Um, these are all 0 to 100 degree rated, tested, proven. And look at the really nice toe kick all the way through the kitchen right there. So uh, what's nice about that is like if you actually want to stand at the sink or stand at the stove, you won't, uh, you know, end up with lower back stress or pain or anything like that. Now, if I sweep you down here under this overhead cabinet, you can see a power outlet hidden there. And then if we get back a little bit further, you see a, uh, a power outlet hidden down uh, by the countertop level in that alcove. I've always thought that that would be a, a, a really ideal um, like appliance station. But speaking of appliances, you still have that 12 volt fridge. But based on your feedback, they finally found a supplier that could get them a convection like air fryer microwave. So they now have more function there. But this is a touring edition. They always include an oven and not the little 15, 16 inch easy bake oven. They're like 21, 22 inch like oven that, you know, actually does some decent uh, cooking because it provides far more even heating through the RV. Um, now, the RV has a 15,000 BTU whisper ducted air system, but what you're going to find is where they do vent fans in the Touring Edition, you're always going to get that, uh, that, that bigger fan uh, wherever it's physically possible. Uh, I'm trying to think offhand, there might be some kind of weird wonky situation where maybe it, it required them to do something different, but I'm, I don't think of that. I, I'm just trying to make sure I don't misspeak. Anyway, 
from the theater seat straight across from the entertainment center. And that's a 12 volt um, like TV sound bar combo. And you might notice some decent campsite viewing on this one. Um, I've seen a couple other versions of floor plans like this with maybe a little bit more viewing, but I don't really see other builders doing anything like that. <laughs> that uh, what they call their stargazer skylight. It's basically a giant Euro window on the front of this thing. And uh, you'll see me demonstrate later uh, all of these Euro windows have both day and night shades. Your slide side um, breeze windows also have both day and night shades, which I think is very, very cool. And uh, overall, the space that this small RV gives you in the living room, like it's giving us that double Dynofa, you know, super slide living space without actually needing to have a big giant super slide, which drastically cuts down on total length of the RV. Now, there are tons of power outlets and USB outlets uh, in this RV. All of your household outlets um, are inverter prepped, and you actually have an optional uh, solar inverter combo package with 400 watts of solar and a 2,000 watt inverter, and it would power all the outlets. What's nice is that they, they went 2,000 watt inverter so that if you want to be able to run like coffee maker kind of stuff, it's that extra juice to kick some things over. Touring edition though, not like the off-grid warrior kind of thing like um, Overland edition is. So it's not the kind of solar package intended to be like to, to crank the air conditioner and stuff like that. That's not really what it is and uh, what it's for. Now I wanna dive into this a little bit because this sofa actually changed from my, my original video. Originally it was a triple recliner and you'll see that it's not that anymore. But we're actually gonna begin up top here on the slide. I'm gonna open that storage for you. But also look at the windows, left, middle, right. You've got, uh, you know, day shade and half and half shade and then night shade. You have your choice in how you're going to arrange all this. Now those handy little swivel stands for the, uh, the sofa, those you can get out of the way. But the front sofa actually comes with a pair of lagoon tables that store right under the sofa, which is cool. So uh, you literally do have a double Dynofa situation without needing to bust out an additional free floating table which actually is included with the RV. In the front pass-through compartment, you'll find that it actually does include its own additional uh, standalone folding table uh, for like picnic purposes, but it's so big in here, you could bring it inside. I, I would say you could use it for additional cargo sp or, uh, countertop space. You definitely don't need to do that though. Uh, looking through the kitchen here, down below, they did opt to go for the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster to burn your bunions off and fry your phalanges. And uh, that's a whole lot of names for one specific thing right there. You can see in these, um, it, they're a little, I feel like they're a little inconsistent on this. Some of their models will have like, I, I think they have a farm sink. Some of them have a split sink like this. Uh, maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe the touring, I, I see, I have seen hundreds of RVs this week alone. Like to you, it's just one video coming out. But to me, I this is like the 401st RV that I've seen uh, today, basically. Uh, anyway, moving on from there, take a look at this. That TV can pivot around. So if you want to split the difference and have a conversation corner up front, you can do that. All of our cabinetry is all pocket screwed lumber core. So it's actual screws into wood. And as you can see, for demonstrational purposes only, we loaded up dad's medicine cabinet so you can get an idea of like what real world objects look like when they're in there. Um, and you can draw your own conclusions from there. <laughs> <laughs> the drawers, by the way, they're all soft clothes, which is cool. And they leave you a nice space under the uh, the sink for a big wastebasket if you're so inclined. Now there's a couple other cool little details here. Like if we slide up to the uh, control panel here, this is where you'll find uh, your uh, command center. Now the Bluetooth app that you can get with this all, it, you know, your, all the functions that this does, you can do off the app. But the, the app can also integrate your tire pressure monitoring. So you kind of have everything in one shot, which is cool. Uh, all of your ceiling lights. Now, the, the camera might flicker a little bit, by the way. If you are sensitive to flickering viewing, you might want to close your eyes. Three, two, one. The ceiling lights can dim down. I don't know what the deal is. My camera with dimmer switch lighting is not friendly. That segment of the video is done, just in case you had your eyes closed and you were just listening for a second. But the awning lights are also dimmable. And it's just those extra ember doing ember thing details. Thankfully, more and more manufacturers are starting to jump on that bandwagon there. Uh, but uh, it, it's definitely a trend I'd like to see continue and uh, not diminish by any means. But back here, this I think is the major update. And it doesn't sound like a oh, big deal. So they added a little space to the bathroom. 
that I, I think was a big deal because last year it was a little bit tight around here. Let's actually start right down at the toilet area since I think this is where it's uh, going to be the most um, impactful. So first of all, like I said, last year, it was so tight around that toilet that I, I frankly personally barely fit. And I'm not the biggest dude. I'm not the smallest dude. But this year, folks, it gets it passes the test. That is nerd preferred for being fairly fluffy friendly right there. There's also little cool details. Like if you look inside the, the little shelving where you can keep the extra butt napkin rolls, they actually have the butt napkin roller all in one location, which, you know, just makes tons of sense. Now, that is a full medicine cabinet, but I love the backlighting that it has on it so that it, uh, you know, provides that better airflow. You know what? When I was talking about the vent fans, um, I'm glad I was a little uh, non-specific and left myself a little bit of leeway here because it looks like in the big area of the RV, they're using the big one. Now, this is still a Max Air fan. It's a different type of Max Air fan. It basically has an integrated rain vent cover built right into it. So you can make sure that, you know, you can close it off, but you don't have to like crank the lid up, down, anything like that, just a little easier. But with these being almost seven foot tall and me being a little over six one, headroom in the shower is awesome. That's one of the things I like about these, that 82 inch interior height. And the thoughtful details, like the, the, maybe you're having a hard time seeing it black on black on camera. There's a little grab handle right here. So you have something to hold on to when you're getting out of the shower. Although I will tell you, it's it's more of a fingertip grabber. Um, remember that uh, movie Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone? It feels like a little bit more of a, uh, a, a cliffhanger uh, <laughs> handle. By the way, the reason I'm pointing you straight down here, the same toe kick here that you have in the kitchen, and it does have both heat and air venting um, in the, uh, the the floor. If I don't point that out, um, or not in the floor, in, in the bathroom, if I don't point that out, someone may reasonably think that they forgot to do that. Thankfully, they did not. But the road mode travel access on this one is also fantastic. Now, uh, I mean, I'm standing all the way back here at the bathroom, so I think it goes without question. Kitchen, bathroom, easily accessible if you look forward though where this floor plan does that the others don't which means this is bigger longer heavier more expensive they had to add extra space to do this you can still fold down the bed and again it's not a shorty short camp queen it is a true queen bed you even have a few inches to spare here so if you don't care about the murphy function of this because this is not optional murphy bed i called that wrong in my original video last year it's one of the other reasons i want to put some uh, update footage out on this this is only a murphy bed model but because you can close the slide, even with the bed down, you could ignore the fact that it's a Murphy bed model. You could put in a giant, super thick, heavy duty, double pillow top, true queen of your choice and just leave it down all the time and really never lose anything. It might make it difficult to access the storage um, under the sofa, but that's really the only little bit of a, a hiccup that this one would have. Again, it takes extra size, but it does extra things. <laughs> I've been... I am so tired. I thought I was all done. I walked over to my laptop, started off all my footage and went, I never recorded the outside of the camper. So uh, yeah, that's if that gives you an indication as to where my brain has been lately. Anyway, let's look at the back side of this. Now, um, a lot of RVs have that uh, telescopic ladder mount. This is one of the first brands where you first saw that kind of creeping in. They actually do include the ladder though. and. You know their front storage compartment is big enough you actually have a place to, to stuff the thing so that you're not uh losing out on anything which is kind of nice now this one is outfitted with their optional solar inverter package uh that's dual 200 watt panels up top uh and a 2000 watt inverter that'll be enough to like crank the coffee maker that kind of stuff that doesn't mean this is some kind of boondock off-grid warrior you know that, that's more ish where the overland series kind of uh comes in you know they have a little more aggressive uh, bigger solar package. By default, this has zero factory solar. It's actually just prep for solar and inverter because there's a lot of people who are going to use this uh, rolling down the road and, uh, you know, just for park camping. That's basically how I would use it. And folks like that, we don't really need solar. Now, sometimes people say, yeah, but how do you keep the fridge running if you don't have solar in transit? It's a 12 volt fridge, right? Uh, you, you don't even need solar to run the fridge in transit. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the power line coming in from the pickup in the seven way plug will run it. Now this thing right here, it looks like a couple taillights. The one on the left, definitely, that is a taillight. The one on the right is radar. It's rump radar. <laughs> but what it is, it's um, blind spot detection. It's, it's just automotive tech. They were able to get the sensors and apply it to the RV. And what you will see is um, what looks like vertical nose lights 
they're actually blind spot indicators. If they light up, they tell you as the driver, glancing in your rear view mirror while going down the highway very quickly, whether or not it's safe to change lanes. It works really well. It's really, really cool. Now, features like that, they have turn signal safety lighting, they have Goodyear endurance radials, and they have a torsion, uh, axle, and suspension package. You can see straight through here, there is no leaf spring action going on. Now, it's not a true independent suspension like their Overland series has. There's a lot of people that call this an independent suspension. And actually, years ago, I used to as well before I, I learned the difference between things. But um, it works in a very similar fashion, but it actually works in a sense the opposite of leaf springs because what it'll do is it, it fights against body roll. So if you're going around one of those super sharp curly cue kind of exits on the highway, instead of the RV trying to lean off the road and pull you off the road, it will lean against it. Almost like if you were riding a motorcycle or a bicycle, you know, you lean into the curve. That's what this RV will do a little bit. Now, <laughs> the RV's not gonna lean around like a, uh, like a motorcycle rider screaming down the road. <laughs> but you kind of get the idea. The suspension fights that. Now this big alcove over here, that's intended for if you want to add a couple optional like Dragonfly, uh, Game Changer, big giant mega batteries. That's what that space is intended for. If you want to bring all that action inside the RV and, and get the battery wiring out from the, uh, the elements. Now up top here, you might notice this little hardware. This RV includes its own little picnic table. You flip that lever in front of us, it drops down, slides out nice and easy. Then you just slide it back in, push it up, it locks in place. No like buckle strappy stuff that you have to deal with. And there is over 50 cubic foot of front pass-through storage on this. It's huge, huge. Because um, it's a mini drop frame basically. Now, you are prepped and ready of course for a full observation camera suite. That's both uh, rear and side view and slam latches all the way around. Now we've got a, uh, a box full of all kinds of fun things in front here. But uh, what, what it's kind of covering up is the quick drop stabilizers. You probably got a good look at those, uh, you know, previously. Um, we are parked right over here in nature. You know, this thing is, uh, it's, it's getting a face massage from Mother Nature over here in their little campsite. Um, <laughs> up front, we have our smart jack. What this is going to do is it will remember how high it was when you got unhooked from your vehicle. And then you can level your RV like normal. Then when you get ready to get hitched, basically you hit a button and it will go back to your hitching height. So you just back the truck right under it and off you go. It's just a little simpler and easier. Now, sometimes people ask, um, why doesn't the propane box up here? Why doesn't the gearbox have a lock? Well, when you have propane, you have to be able to sh reach in and shut it off quickly. So legally, you're not, a, a manufacturer cannot lock a propane compartment. You as an owner, if you choose to do it aftermarket, that's up to you. But um, understand it's not actually the safest thing and I don't really recommend it. Now they do the Versa coupler up front here. Uh, it's height adjustable. Theoretically, you could swap it out for an articulating hitch. I don't think that's what touring edition is for, but if you want the, the hitch to ride a little higher or a little lower to easier marry up with your vehicle, that's, that's the way you do it. And by the way, here's a handy little thing. Um, if you want to turn the outside marker lights and stuff on your RV because it looks cool at your destination, uh, grab your seven-way plug and you see where that fat little black tab is sticking out? Put a little fuse or anything jumping those two things right below it and that will turn off your or turn on your outside lights. Now remember, your neighbors may not necessarily appreciate that, but if you look all the way up top here, uh, you'll see that's where those, uh, th those little lights are glowing. But you might notice another set of lights not glowing. Nothing's wrong. Those are your turn signal lights. Uh, kind of like a, uh, you know, a semi-tractor trailer. It gives more indications to other drivers on the road what your you know, intentions are doing. Good safety feature. Jumping over to the other side here. If I'm just going to be ultra picky, like it's nice that these are swinging doors. I, like some kind of magnet or something to hold it so it's not swinging would be cool. By the way. I mentioned turning on the lights outside. Uh, you're like, well, these lights didn't turn on either. These are your, your blind spot detection lights. They will light, oh, look at this over here, hold on. You see how those uh, lights on the nose are lit up on that trailer over there in the distance? Well, that's because that's kind of parked, uh, you know, next to some trees and there's stuff close to us. So it's letting you know, hey, there's something in the way there. There is, by the way, a bypass where you can like shut that off so that, uh, you know, people don't get annoyed that your campsite's lit up all night because it happens to be near something at your campsite. So no issues there. Again, the telescopic ladder is included. Now underneath here, 
Embers are all zero to 100 degree rated, tested, proven. Uh, this is riding on a Norco chassis. It's not a Lippert chassis. Um, it's a, a huck bolted kind of aircraft style frame. Belly's enclosed, forced air heated, radiant barrier, tank heaters. I know I rattle that off in that order all the time, but it's what the RV has, and I think it's the kind of questions that people have sometimes. One last quick little note here. It is a single sewer outlet, so you don't have to get a hose, connector, Y splitter, or anything like that. It's just hook it up, leave her alone, and it's not buried under a slide or anything. So thanks again for tuning in. Let me know what you think about the updates here. Like I said, for the most part, it's very, very much the same RV it was last year. But I, I think the inclusion of that bigger, wider bathroom I think for some folks it's going to be an immediate game changer. I think that there were some folks that looked at this last year and just went, man, if I can't sit on the can, no sale, dude. And I, I, re I respect that. I get that. Like, that's a function that a lot of people are going to need an RV to provide that this maybe didn't for a lot of folks. And they did it in a way that doesn't uh, really affect the price tag. They did it in a way that doesn't extend the coach, add any real weight to it. Overall, it's just the same thing. I think you could argue a little bit better, but that's my two cents. Let me know what you think. And of course, always to help you, I'll leave you some links in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability, see which of our stores have these on hand. I will tell you though, this is their number one selling most popular of the touring edition. And we've spent more time sold out of it than we've ever had them in. Most of the folks that we've been working with on these, uh, like we have them on order and they're putting their names on the ones that are on order coming in. So that might have to be the case. Contact our team. If we don't have any on our website, we can get you some figures that way. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.